Welcome to the third chair, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ryan Adams. This is my main man, Joshua Hall. Jesus in the back behind us. I'm about to stop being like, you don't ever (laughs) hang a digit, you man. You're right. You're right. (laughs) I can't even go to Jesus and be like, I'm be smooth, you see? Like, <laughs> then you go to me. And you go to just... me, you be looking at me, and I'm like, I don't want to undo my death. <laughs> you said, I can't do it. No, no. <laughs> like, you got violated for real. <laughs> I really was confused. <laughs> Yo, I hope y'all doing well. Um, I'm doing pretty good. I've been feeling great lately, honestly. We had a conversation. Me, Joshua, and Jaden, we've been telling y'all about Jaden. They're going to think Jaden fake. We've <laughs> 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 we seen Jaden, right? <laughs> Jaden was supposed to be here today, um, but then he got caught up in some work. He was supposed to be here. He's going to be here. He's, he's supposed to be here that time I, I was went to Philly, yeah, and then I got a flat tire. When he wants to be here, he will be. Well, that, never mind. When he's ready, he's, he'll be ready. Yeah. I'm excited for him to come on here. He got a lot of wisdom. We had a conversation nah, the other he really night. Does. It's crazy. And he, 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 it was just all of us together. Holy Spirit would just bounce off all of us. Like, literally, as soon as he came in, because he came in, he was talking about stuff we were talking Yo, about on the podcast. Yeah. That joint was ridiculous, because it happened yeah, bro. all night, and he was saying, like, everything. He went through the whole Bro. Discussion. Yeah, like he was just, but he was so casual though. So casual so about casual, it. Like, like, oh yeah, guys. And mentioning everything that we had talked X, about. X, Y, and Z. I was, <laughs> it's like, okay. I was like, where, where was you at? But that was it's like, dope. I know you live across the street. No, yeah, for real. I was like, where, where are you getting this information from? Like, you spy what is your source? Oh, yeah. What is your source? Oh, pause. Oh, new merch. New I don't, merch. I, it's on TikTok shop. I don't know if it's, if it's going to be on the website by the time this drops. It might be, but if you can see... It says, what's it say? Mates it worship. Mates worship. I got this color. I got like a beige. I got a blue, I think. And there's a black. But um, yeah, this is a lot doper than I thought it was going to be, honestly. My girlfriend came up with the design, design idea. And the only tweak I made was like making it smaller, um, which is right now I'm putting it in the corner up here. But no, nah, she's great. She's Is there anything on the back? Nah. Yeah. I don't think so, is it? No. Yeah. So no, nah, yeah, my girlfriend, she, credit her for that. Emily Stragon P, man. Um, she's great. And she also had oh, I'm not even gonna do that. I don't know if she wants to go follow on that. Um we can ask her for next time. Yeah. She not she don't maybe be on it no more for real, for real, but I don't know, maybe for the future. We'll we'll see. Um, but yeah, uh today we got a, we got we kind of got things in our head what we want to yeah, talk about. A couple of different things. Yeah, but we not really we don't really got like a schedule. So yeah. we're just gonna talk. Love. Love. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I've been saying. Bro, I don't know if y'all come from my TikTok or my Instagram, y'all know how much I talk about love and how much um I'm just like, yo, y'all really don't know how to be loving people. Like, like why why aren't y'all why are y'all so hateful all this and all that? And um, like I'm really big on on love because I just feel like people don't really know how to how to how to do it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, well, how like, do you like to do it? The way that God says to do it. Like the God I what I I always say this. About the hard part. No, not that part. <laughs> I, I say that all the time too. I was also gonna say the the most important commandment in the Bible is to love God, right? Yeah. The second most important commandment in the Bible is to what? Well, he said they equal. Nah, he said one's more important than the other. Oh, oh I'm wrong. Go ahead. You gonna make me check my facts before I keep yeah, going? I, yeah, I, I I thought it was, I thought it was like. There's two things. I thought he said there was two, and then he says there's this, and then he says and there's also this. We don't both need to check it, do we? You can check with me. Whoever is wrong got to get rebuked. (laughs) 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 Yeah, here it is. So so confident. (laughs) So confident. Oh, no. I'm going to pull. I'm I'm on Google. I want to pull up in the Bible. Not facts. (laughs) This is, what's this at? Matthew 22? Is that what yeah, it is? 30, 30, Matthew 22, 37. Yeah. Matthew 22, 37. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying, too. What am I saying? This is a second, a second is equally important. Yeah, like they came first and second, but it was like. Hold on, I'm still looking at a different version now. Which one are you looking at? The one that. Let me see. 
Because I, I was looking at NLT right there. So that's, but I know I got. Okay, let me look. Nah, so, but. Because it says, because it says, this is the first and great commandment. Yeah. So it doesn't necessarily say this is the first and greatest commandment. It's saying this is the first great commandment. Oh. And the other one, like, it's the second great commandment. Oh, no, you got to rebuke me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> is this, okay. And the second is like unto it. Okay. Oh, so I've been, I've been understanding that wrong for, for a while now. It's okay. I've talked about that, I think. It's I've okay. mentioned it. No one's perfect. Oh, no, guys. But don't do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what love is. What is love? First song about that. It's equally important. Okay, but what were you going to yeah, say? Okay, no, yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I yeah. was... Okay. I won't rebuke you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, The second was... Well, the second one... That commandment, equal to the first commandment, is love your neighbor as you love yourself. So, um... Like you just follow that because, what if if I'm going to love you as I love myself, that means I'm thinking about you as I think about myself, and I wouldn't want to think or say or do anything a certain type of way that I wouldn't like to myself. So why would I do it to you? Mm -hmm. Like as simple as that. Like it's not even nothing that needs to be overcomplicated. It's literally treat them how you want to be treated, which is yeah. another verse. Yeah, I think. People don't always know what they're doing when they're doing it. Um, like how sometimes we just start acting on behalf of things and not understanding, um, like, what pushed us to that point. Yeah. Like, we just... I know that a lot of times that when people speak, they speak out of um, triggers. And they speak yeah. they speak out of being triggered instead of thinking, um, speaking, thinking before they speak. Um, and because it's easy, like, obviously, we feel things. And like we're, we're we're human, so we're going to feel. But it's important to know how to navigate what you feel. It's important to know. I know. I was, <laughs> it's important to know. It just came out. It's, a, it's important to to uh, to realize that you're going to get uh, emotion when someone yeah. says anything to you. But you need to know how to give the proper reaction, which is why the Bible says, um, "Be quick to listen and slow to speak." You need your mind to process what you've what you've already Bro. gotten. So I give an example. So like I'm a teacher. And last year was my first year teaching. And we were doing, in the classroom, we had split. And we were doing small groups. And so basically, like, you're in the room. And even though I'm, like, in my own kind of section with my, with the students that I are in my group, I can still hear my other teacher. She can hear me. Yeah. And she was, like, it was not her first year. Like, so she, like, like be ment would mentor me and stuff, right? Yeah. And one day, I, she's doing her math lesson. I'm doing my, my small math group. And like I'm like, dang, bro, her joint is fire. Mm -hmm. My joint is not. <laughs> it's not that. <laughs> My joint is not, not that. doing that. <laughs> My joint is not doing that. And like I felt this feeling. I was like, and I told her this too, because like I wanted to share it with her. I was like, yeah. At first, I was kind of like mad, but then I was like, sometimes I think what people do is they gotta un take time to understand that feeling. When I was like, wait, why do I feel like this? Ooh. Take every thought captive and make it obedient to the word of God. There you go. I don't know what chapter that is. I don't know exactly what verse that is, though. Tough. What chapter is that? I don't know. You don't know? Okay, I'm not going to put you on the spot. I'm not why'd, you, why'd you ask me? Why'd you ask me? Like <laughs> I don't know. I should have asked, right? <laughs> but anyway, it was like, I had this feeling, and I'm like, dang, my joint ain't like that. Like, and that feeling, like, investigate that. It's not her fault. She's a tough teacher, <clears throat> and I'm inexperienced. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, I think, if I wasn't careful about it, it could have turned into contempt mm -hmm. towards her. Bro, it's crazy because I have such a similar experience. Ah, uh, sure. Can you um can you tell your chair towards me more a little bit though? Yeah. I feel like you feel far from me. No, you're just you're just facing that way. I want you to face towards me. Oh, of course. We always face for each other. Together. <laughs> Together, what? Yeah, high five. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's that? Oh, I was um. <laughs> what? I did like I just said together, but I was thinking of the Marlon, the Wayne's brothers. Oh, happy here, my brothers. And yeah, I, I, da, da, da. <laughs> I didn't hear yeah, the way said it. I wouldn't. Yeah, but yeah, I, cause I really didn't give enough. Yeah, but <laughs> go ahead, bro. I'm <laughs> oh, <laughs> when um college freshman year, uh, me and Emily, 
uh, first meet and everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've been kicking it for, it's probably was about a few months at this point. Yeah. Um, basically, anyone knows Emily, girl can do anything like in the world. Um, she's just super smart and just, just literally like, probably the smartest person like I know. So with that, she likes to be involved on campus and everything. And she likes to be, uh, she likes just to, just to do a lot. It makes her feel, um, makes her feel good about herself. Mm -hmm. So she does all these things on campus freshman year. And she's, when I say like everything that like she's getting, I think, I don't know if she did student government freshman year, but um, either way, she was in all these clubs. She was trying to get into leadership, um, leadership positions. Um, all of her teachers liked her. Like she was like, literally, we walked on campus, literally everyone's saying, hi, hi, hi. I got to a point where I was like, yo, do you just know everyone on campus? And she was like, <laughs> I know I don't. And I literally walked outside with her, just talking to random people like, yo, do you know her? Do you know her? And she was like, <laughs> she was like, stop, Ryan. No, I don't know her. I know some people actually didn't know her. Most people did. Wow. And you did it for like a whole two days, I think I did it for mm. it. But it was it was funny. But there's something in there, but we can't get into it right. But there's something in there. Okay, we'll get into it later. But maybe um, I don't know. I don't have it fully formed. I just know there's something there. If it does form, there. then yeah. you'll let me know. Um, but yeah, one day she was in my room and she was like, she was talking about her accomplishments and everything, right? Mm -hmm. And uh I didn't. I didn't react the way that she wanted me to react. Before. Right. So um, she felt shut down by that kind of. And I don't think we talked about that day because that was before we kind of went over our like whole communication thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, I don't know what she did. I think she ended up leaving later that day because she kind of hid, I think, that that I made her feel a certain type mm. of way. And I had mm. to like bring it out of her later. Wow. Um, But then after we talked about it, she was like, yeah, like you... I was excited about telling you about all these things and you just didn't reciprocate that energy. And you, you, I didn't feel like you was like proud of me or none of that. And like, I care about you. So I want you to care about what I do and everything. And I was like, dang, like, like you're right. Like that I definitely- a, geez, That was a great way to articulate that. Yeah. And on, I was, her, on her part. I was like, I was like, you're completely right. And I, I was thinking about, cause I'm very analytical. So I think about why anyone does anything, including myself, you feel me? Like. Mm -hmm there's my root, and then how did my root get there? Like, what's my root yeah. to my root? You feel me? I'm not gonna lie. I feel like, go ahead, no, keep going. So what I did was, um, as she's talking to me, I'm talking to her about my experiences. I was like, you know what? You're right, I do feel that way, and I don't want to feel that way, but I do feel kind of um, almost jealous, like, towards, like, what uh. you're doing. And I don't know why, but it's making me feel like I have to do these things too, even though I don't mm. want to. I want to rest, but you don't want to rest. So I think I got to do all these things too because yeah. I see you doing them. And then she ended up explaining to me, well, in high school, oh, you know the point I brought up? I'm going to say what she said first. In high school, she said um, she didn't do, she wasn't involved in high school. Mm -hmm. So when she got to college, she was like, you know what? I want to be different. I want to be more involved this yeah. time. In high school, I was an athlete. I was always working. Like I was working literally all the time. He ran track. I played football. Um, yeah, I, all this stuff. Yeah, I, I did everything. I was I was running track all the seasons or playing football, whatever it was. And um, she ended up saying, like, you don't feel, um, you don't feel like you want to do anything now because you did it all in high school. Mm. You know, like you already had that. Those were those were your glory days, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. And you're you're tired now. You, you should you should be able to rest. You earned that rest. She's just like I I feel differently now because I I didn't do that in high school. I didn't run track in high school. I didn't play sports in high school. I wasn't really involved. I didn't care. Yeah, as I much. definitely I feel where she comes. Yeah. From. So she was like, you know what? I want I want to do this now. So I just want you to support me with that. And I was like, you know what? You're right. And from that day forward, I made it like, I made it a, a persistent effort to, no matter how I feel about anything, I always make sure I show the same energy that she, that she shows towards me. So as we're talking about love, what I hear in that is somebody who loves you help can help you understand your feelings. Most definitely. Most definitely. That's, <clears throat> again, the Bible says it's not good for man to be alone. Mm. Who did God give uh, Adam? Gave him a woman. Bone of his bone, flesh of bone his, of his flesh. bone, flesh of his flesh. You feel me? Like it doesn't have to be like. Obviously, another man could have helped me get come to that realization, but it hit different being her. Obviously, and it might not have like. It might not even surfaced. No, yeah, most definitely because it only surfaced because of how our relationship was. Yeah, yeah, you know, and like how she felt initially. Like I don't know. But, no, yeah. Um, it made me do some thinking, but also, it's cool because that added to my definition of love. Um, I thought you were going to say something, so I took a sip of water. No, nah, you're good. I can say, because what I was going to say earlier with love, 
when you said like you're analytical, you think of everything about why people do things, including yourself. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm the same way. Same. And, like, cause it's like, bro, I feel like being analytical about somebody. That's a way. That's one of the ways I understand love. Mm -hmm. Like, you interact with me, you talk with me, we share experiences <laughs> together, or you experience me in a certain way on this day and a different way on that day. And you use those experiences, use our conversations to understand and inform how you want to interact with me. Right. You know, I feel disrespected if you, if you know something about me, something that I like or that I don't like, and it doesn't influence the way that we interact. Yeah, most definitely. Um, it's like kind of like the way I, like, I react to your music. Like, because, yeah, no, you feel me? Because yeah. like, I, I'm not going to put you on blast on but I'm like, I know your past experiences with like showing people your music and everything. Mm -hmm. And I know that, like I did it with unconsciously because I genuinely do like your music and enjoy it. Yeah. But like another level to that is knowing your past. And I analyze that for myself. And I'm like, yo, I want to give him like this much love on it because I know how much it means to him. Because he already mm. told me that. You feel me? He expressed yeah. it to me through um stories about other people and everything. So, But I never, but Pete, how I told him through other stories, I never actually asked him or told him. Nah. When I show you my music, this is how I want you to, like, we, that never, we never had that Never had that conversation. Like, we didn't you have just to. Took, you took note. Exactly. Because I feel like, I feel like love is really being <clears throat> able to, you just, you do things out of, you do things out of love. You know? Oh, brother. I'm, I'm, I don't know what you're about to say, but I'm about to say, like, how do we all get, to the position we're right now. Right now, we're, we're Christians. We are Christians because we're saved by Christ mm -hmm. and we follow Christ, but we're only able to follow Christ because God made a decision out of love. Yeah. He didn't have, no one told him to do that. No one, no one was like, oh, you gotta, you gotta send your son down there because yeah. everyone's gonna go to hell. Dog. Like, and I'm glad I like didn't interrupt you because like how you just said, God didn't have to do that. If you only do things that you have to do, then your relationships will not function in love. That relates to the podcast I was talking um, on today, too. But I want to go somewhere else with that. It's very true. Okay. Remember when we was talking about the promises of the enemy and the blessings of God? Yeah. Blessings of God flow out of love. Blessings. God will just bless you just because. Just because. Like, you, you're, doing, you're doing something great. You know, that's like, yo, you, you we, we on the podcast right now. You know what? Here's... Here's some here's some joy, actually, a little extra joy today, you know? No, and I'm Here, getting it. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. When it comes to the devil, because everyone's always um, I don't I'm not even gonna talk about music industry. I'm just gonna say in general, people know the devil can give you things. Yeah. But it's always it's a transaction, you know? Ooh. It's not, it's not you love me, so so you're gonna give me this. It's mm -hmm. you want something from me, yeah, being detrimental, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I have to give you this in order to get that, yeah. you know? So, uh, go ahead. I know you got, yeah, the, you're itching. <laughs> that's where it's, like, perverted on the mission of God, right? Because people could, I can see people being like, well, God gives you stuff. Like, he blesses you to be a blessing. So, like, what's the difference between God blessing you to be a blessing and the enemy blessing you to further his purpose? And mm -hmm. the, the difference is this. There are certain things God will just bless you with because he loves you. Like you said, there are other things that come as fruit when you walk the straight and narrow path that God has for your life. Yeah. You know, so, but the enemy will never. Never, never. He will never, never bless you just because. Yeah. He will always bless you or send, uh, give you a promise or give you something for the sake of destruction, mm -hmm. whether it be in your life or the lives of others. Exactly. And then on top of that, when he gives you that thing, that thing that he gives you cannot sustain you. And the the longer that you're on it, the more you will find it actually is taking from you. Exactly. More than what you got. Yeah. And it will get to a point where even when you get it off of you, you cannot, like, when you get it off, the damage is done. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, say if I was like a guy who... Um, maybe like in my childhood, and this did not happen by the way, if my sister or my mom always called me ugly and said I wasn't attractive and like no woman would ever want me. Like, and I took that to the heart, that damage, and then the enemy's like, Man, I could give you women. I could give you, I could give you affirmation. Right. I can give you confidence. Right. And 
<laughs> but the thing is, he's not giving me affirmation. The whole time if my mom and my sister were joking, he never made me look more handsome. He never gave he made, he never made me more appealing in the eyes of women. I already was that. Mm -hmm. And so when I walk in it and he's telling me he's giving me that, and then I start to sleep with a lot of women, he never actually gave me that. That was good. I was gonna have that regardless. But what he's doing is he's pushing me, saying that he's giving me a gift and he's pushing me in it to not only lead myself to like impurity, but also getting making others more impure because of what I'm willing to do. Like I'm leading others towards impurity with me. Yeah. You feel me? No, yeah. But like once you, that's yeah. done, the bodies are the bodies. Mm -hmm. And you're and like how we're talking about God had this ties into grace. Yeah. You do have grace, you have mercy. It makes you new, but it doesn't undo what is already done. Right. God doesn't want to undo it. Nah. Yeah. That's because that's also the thing. Like that's where we get like our past is a reference point for us before and after Jesus. Right. And without the before, you can't understand the after. Without knowing that Paul killed Christians, you don't understand the significance of what he does after he follows Christ. It's just like, oh, he just some Jesus freak. Jesus freak is crazy, yeah. You feel me? Oh, but yeah, like right. his, the fact that you, um, his transformation. Yeah. Gives it like being, yeah. His transformation gives his story more power. Facts. I always say that your past, um, you choose to make your past your platform. Like mm. that's why it's important to be able to, be able to face your past. Because a lot of people, They'll 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 have a past and they'll they'll try to hide from it or they'll try to just um just move on from it without healing from it. Yeah. But if if it becomes your platform, you're able to make it into your testimony, and then that'll help others. Because imagine if Paul just ran from his past, you know, never healed from his past. So I'm sure he had to heal from his past. Oh yeah. After what he did, and he talks about how he probably never stopped. Never stopped what healing. Oh yeah, it's probably it was an ongoing process because like healing doesn't have to have an end. It just mm -hmm. it's just it's a process. It's progress every day or every week or every so-and-so, but as long as you're facing it, it has power to become yeah. your testimony. So, but the basis of what we were saying, um, that nothing, when it comes to love, everything is, uh, it doesn't have to be done out of something. It right. Just, it, you can just do it just because you love somebody. Yeah. And I was going to say- That's why he did salvation. No, yeah, literally. That's that's and why- That's the greatest gift. Yeah. And exactly, perfect example. Um, Shoot. No! No, God, I prayed for this. Count it all joy, brother. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Count Lost it all cool. joy. Lost maybe he's trying cool. to give you, maybe he didn't give you something to lose. He gave you something else to gain. <laughs> Got anything. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Good job, though. That was a good one. Um, what was I going to say? Because I was saying the love, and then we came back, and I was about to go into something about love. The greatest gift, salvation. Nah. It was about... Uh, how, oh yeah, I think it's important, it's just like we're talking about being analytical with love, it's important to put yourself in someone else's shoes when you love uh, them. Like, when you truly love somebody, it, perfect example, the Bible says, love your enemies. And ooh. I feel like, I really do feel like, a lot, since the body of Christ is so broken up, like, because we, we do not love each other the way we're supposed to love each other. Not, not at all, I don't care what nobody says. We are so broken up that we have made other people in the body of Christ enemies. And that's not how it should be. And you see it all the time on social media. You go on someone's post on social media and they're talking about a topic that may be big, may be small, but one person doesn't necessarily agree with what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Straight to the comments, I'm spilling out my emotion. Yeah. They're calling it righteous judgment. So they're putting God's name on their emotion. God don't like that. God don't like that. Don't, really and you're tearing that like person that. down. Yeah. How can I love you out of just love if I'm tearing you down? And it's not, it's not righteous judgment. That's not righteous at all. Righteous judgment should not feel deteriorating. And there's scripture that talks about uh, part of righteous judgment comes <coughs> with privacy. Does it? Yeah. Really? There's scripture that talks about, like, if your brother, so some, I can't remember exactly where it is, um, but there is scripture that talks about, like, yo, if your brother is stepping off, like, speak to him in private. I, yeah. And take someone else with you to bear witness, you know, so it doesn't become like a he said, she said type yeah. of thing. Which is what we get on the internet a lot. A lot. A lot. Um, but, and, and some, like, how you were saying, say, wait, say what you said again about loving 
other people. You said something that made me... Like love your enemies? Loving your enemies. Boom. There it is. So I think a key to that, loving your enemies, when you love somebody, you're making a choice to treat them with the other fruits of the Spirit or treating them how you would want to be treated before you understand why they did what they did or before you understand why they are the way that they are. You feel me? Yeah. Because it's like that cho- that choice to love you, that choice to treat you with kindness and respect before I understand everything is actually what gives me the curiosity and the chance <clears throat> to learn why you are how you are. I think that's, I don't think it's coincidental, coincidental that, that you're saying that, but also like love God and love others are the first two commandments. Like mm-hmm. love is first. Yeah. Love and love leads into the, what you were just saying and leads into all these other yeah. things that reap fruit, you mm-hmm. know. And plus, God is love, so I don't think it's coincidental. Coincidental. Um, dig it. What are you just saying? <laughs> you were saying how it's not coincidental that love God and love others is the first two, and how when like when you love God, it bears more fruit of the yeah, spirit. Yeah, but what were you saying? You said something that clicked with me. Oh, I was saying how you got to love somebody. You make that choice to love somebody before you understand why they yeah, are. Yeah, that. Again, going back to social media. I, m- I remember one time I made a post. I was talking about um, submission. This is one of the videos that I had sent. She was like, yo, am I tripping? <laughs> but <laughs> I made wasn't. It, I wasn't. I wasn't. I knew what I was talking about. I made a video about submission. And um, I really wanted to hit on the fact that the husband submits to the wife, too, in his own way. And, and first. It, and first. And submits. I don't love everybody. It's not like, oh, the husband is... Not like it's, on some domin- yeah, domineering... It's still um, God, husband, um, wife. Like, the husband is still the head of the wife. But... Ephesians specifically says that the husband, um, the way the husband submits to the wife is um, out of love, basically. And to it's a, it's a it's not just any type of love. It's a love that means like I'm gonna I'm willing to die for you, you know, because yes. that's what Christ did for the church. Yes. And if marriage is supposed to represent God's church, then um, what did Christ uh, do for His church? Bro, I got a pin pin right there. Okay, pin it. Um, so you were talking about it's God, husband, wife. Yeah. And we gotta understand that God's order doesn't give value it just gives function mm. so it's like woman is a man is not worth more than a woman because oh, yeah. that's the order he's here because there's a certain function that he's built man to do no yeah most definitely and the woman is here because of certain function that he's given her to do yeah and so i think what would help people understand the order is if instead of going from i think this will help people understand God's order um, in terms of the function. If instead of talking about the order this way, that we talk about it this way. You said that in you the middle that we made about I it. I think. I think you did. Well, I didn't say it like this. <laughs> the Like how you were saying, submit means I'm willing to die for you. So yeah. when God put us in order, he didn't necessarily build this top down. He built us from front to back. Meaning that when this storm comes, it hits me first. Right, 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 right. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm above you. I'm saying whatever is coming, it's got to hit me first. Yeah, which, so, is, which is why you die first. Exactly. Yeah. That arrow that's coming, I'm taking I'm it. I'm taking it, yeah. That wilderness that we're about to experience together, I'm going to go by myself first. Mm-hmm. Not that I'm going to go by myself by choice, but God is going to bring me there first. So that when I come back and it's time for our whole family to go through mm-hmm. it, yeah, yeah, somebody yeah. has already been here to navigate the land. Right. That's not where I thought you was going with that. That's that was good. In facts, bro. Like, cause what happens is, oh my goodness, brother. Think about um <laughs> Joshua. Wow. <laughs> nah. When they were going into the promised land, they sent spies out ahead. So right. imagine like a man and a woman being in having their family, and because you know, we do this thing where it's like women can do anything a man can do. Yes, mm-hmm. you can. Well, not everything. But it's not that you don't have the ability to do the same things that we can do. But it's not, per- God doesn't purpose us to do the same things. Right. So imagine like me having a wife and we have two kids. Why would God purpose for the both of us to go and see the wilderness? Right. And le- First of all, we're leaving the kids alone. Mm-hmm. And second, maybe when... uh if when I come back, I've seen the evils of it. 
we need somebody who hasn't seen the evils of it and, and only has heard about the good so that we continue to press through. I know what you mean. Because, yeah. like, if I, if I, if, like, I might be damaged or, or, uh, damaged or I just have a different experience because of what I've been through. And if we both had that experience, maybe you might justify why I was like, nah, let's just stop right here. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know some things, sometimes it's good to like to be withheld certain knowledge. That's the thing about the the, the tree of the knowledge of good, good and evil. And evil. Yeah. It's all knowledge, but there was certain knowledge God didn't mean for us to have. Yeah, right. So it's like, Sometimes the knowledge we have stops us from, from entering the promised land. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's unavoidable to be exposed to that knowledge. Mm -hmm. So if the knowledge is unavoidable, all right, let me send the man first. Wife, well, you don't even got to go through that. Mm -hmm. I know what you mean. And it's not a knock, like, because you can't go through it or because you couldn't handle it. But he's like, nah, like, I've built this man in a certain way for him to take it. You know, and there's something else. Like, think about childbirth. He built women in a way that they can take that. Yeah. A man couldn't do that. No. So it's not a matter of who's better or who's worse, who's on top, who's bottom. It's about who gets hit first. No, yeah. And I'm, ha I'm happy you... Um, or who gets hit at all. No, yeah. I know what you mean. And I'm happy you cleared it up, too. Um, Because, no, yeah, that's important. I think that's really important, especially in this day and age with how, like, gender roles and everything goes. But I will say... We made a video talking about this very, very, very in depth. And yeah. We broke everything down. It's called uh, submission in relationships, and we made it like a couple months ago, two months ago, something like that, two mm -hmm. and a half months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but literally, it's not not that far away. If you scroll down our page, mm -hmm. like, you'll see it in like one or two swipes. So if you have more questions about that, we probably answered them in that video. Yeah. Um. But very good points. Thank you for saying that. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I that think was Holy it's, Spirit. He was giving me. Yeah, it's very important when we talk about love. I feel like like at all. Um. But what I was going to say with that video in the context of that, I made the video about the relationship uh, roles in, in, uh, in the marriage. And I made the video about like submitting to one another and not just the woman submitting to the man. And basically it got to the comments after it started to get a little bit more traction. Mm -hmm. People were tearing me down. People were like, you don't know what you're talking about, Reed. Uh, I think they, they pointed me to some verse in John and they, they just, it was like... Um, the man is the head of the wife. The man is the head of the wife. And I was like, I'm not saying the man isn't the head of the wife. But all that right. to say that um, people went to the comments with their emotions and not with the love first, you know? They mm. said, oh, yeah, here are my emotions. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna tape love all over it. Like saying that it's it's love, I'm gonna write love on it. But it's like when you give a reaction or a response out of love, it feels different yeah. than when you give it out of the flesh. Because that's really what it is. Because when you get, first of all, love doesn't react, love responds. Yeah. And so what I think people were doing, when they're coming in your comments, with their, their let's investigate that feeling. Not for everybody. For a lot of people, I would venture to say they're jumping in those comments so quick and with such passion because if this is what Ryan, like, I listen to Ryan. I listen to A56 Christian. Mm -hmm. If this is what he is saying, what does my faith mean? Mm -hmm. Like, they don't understand it. You know what I'm saying? And I think when people struggle to understand something about God, it's, number one, it is scary, but they're, I'm not saying it all the way I want to, but basically, like, It's frustration in the Bible is being presented to them in a way that does not agree with the way they currently think about it. Yeah. And so rather than trying to understand how my thoughts and your thoughts could be true, or maybe I got to see maybe mine was wrong and yours is right, or even to see if yours is, is right and my, vice versa. Like mine could be right, yours could be right. Instead of doing that, like, investigation of to really see what's going on, people just would rather tell you you're wrong. Yeah, most definitely. You know, shut it down. It, yeah, because it's like, I don't, un like, God, I don't, how could he, if, if this is the head, then how could this also be right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. See, look at. I'm going to wait patiently. Also, bro, you have a really good memory. Like, I did, I stuck a really big pen in what you were I have saying. a good memory? Bro, nah, I'm going to tell you this because. You always talk about how you be forgetting stuff, but I put like a pin, like when I was like, oh, I got a pin. That was like a five minute pin. And you remembered exactly where you left I off. I was trying very hard to remember, I promise. But you did though, so remember that.
remember that. <laughs> he said he remember that. Oh, it's I just saw it. Give me a second, y'all. I just saw it. Give him a second. No, 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 no. Mm, okay, you know. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna tie it all together. Do it. Do it. Uh, now we gotta go to the Bible. You know, we gonna go to the Bible. You know, I'm gonna give you that book. I'm gonna give you that book. It's the best, <laughs> it's best that possibly can be used. I mean, let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs nine, ten. Proverbs nine, ten. What you want? What you want? I'm gonna go with K- KJV. I'm gonna go with KJV. Thank you for the ad libs. I like him. Yes, sir. Uh, 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 okay. All right. So you just said, I don't even know what you said. I just know what I want to say. Whatever you just said is going to connect to whatever I, what I'm, what did you just say? You remember what you, the last thing you just said? <laughs> <laughs> I know what I want to say though. <laughs> it's okay. You were talking about something. And what popped into my head is love is, before, before you can have wisdom, you need to have love, right? Mm-hmm. And this actually says in Proverbs 9.10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. <gasps> and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. <gasps> okay, so everyone's going to say, well, the fear of the Lord, Ooh. it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yes, but what is the Lord? Love. God is love. So, yes, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, but also Love is intertwined in that statement. Yeah. You know what I mean? So before we can have, before we can have wisdom to respond to whatever we're trying to respond to or to react or to res- to whatever we're going to do out of love that we're saying with, mm-hmm. as out of love, we need, we need to be wise enough to know if what we're feeling is actually love. We need to be wise enough to navigate our feelings like we said earlier and know that this is something that's coming out of love and not out of flesh. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and now, pff, we're just tied all together with the fear of the Lord. The yeah. fear of the Lord. What does the fear of the Lord mean? The fear of the Lord is having a deep reverence for God. What is a deep reverence for God? Is it just being in awe of God, which means being having a deep respect for God, which basically. You, and you got to know who he is to respect gotta know who, Exactly. What you say earlier, it's basically recogni- recognizing the power differences. Yeah. I know that, I'm, for, for example, my dad. I know that my dad is my dad, and I recognized his power over me as like a young young man and as like a young boy, I recognized that he was the one in power of our household. Mm-hmm. I was the child. Mm-hmm. He told me what to do. Mm-hmm. Not out of like, I'm telling you what to do. Like I'm not your slave, but out of love. You know what I mean? So I had a fear of him. Not a fear as I'm scared of you, but a fear as in like, you correct me when I'm wrong and you discipline me when I'm wrong. And I love you for that. I can love you out of fear. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. The Bible also does say, um, that the Lord corrects his children. Yep, that's in Proverbs too. He chastens yeah. who, he, who he loves about. So exactly, exactly, so exactly. Yeah. So it just, it all goes full circle. Um, When it comes to the fear of God, the fear of God, you can't fear God without, well, can you fear God without loving God? I think you can love God without fearing him, but I don't know if you can fear him without loving him. Whoa, wait a minute. Love God without fearing him? Don't think you can do it. No, I think it was the other way around. Because... Love God without fearing him. Because... All right, let me hear what you got. Like, the, and I'm going to practice. So this is... Instead of jumping in his comments, what I'm going to do is ask him a question. There you go. There, there you, know you go. There you like, go. Because, like, we Like, <laughs> I don't... Like, by our, st- our statements say that we disagree, but if I listen to him explain, I might find out that we might not disagree. You feel me? You feel like... So what do you mean? What do you, why do you think that you can love God if you don't fear him? Based off... Based off experiences, like I was watching, the, you watched the video on the, on the basement with uh, uh, the guy who was talking about the fear, the fear of God. Yeah, but, yeah, John B. Yeah, John Bevere. his um, one of his testimonies was that he he knew that he loved God and he would do things out of love for God. I think he was talking about when he was um, was he a pastor or he was yeah, a speaker. Yeah, he was a, 
he was both, I think. Yeah. At different points so in time. Either he was speaking or he was pastoring. And one day he came to the conclusion he's um because something something in his heart wasn't right, basically. And he came to the conclusion, oh, I love God this much, but I don't fear him. I'm missing that um, uh, in okay. my relationship with God. So he went on a journey basically to learn about the fear of God. And he actually, I think he went to jail. And <laughs> is am I right? Or am I just funny stories? I, I I don't quote me, but I think he did go to jail, and I think that that's where he learned about the fear of God um, more. And then when he like he was in jail, or he went to visit a jail. No, I think he was in jail. <laughs> I think he was. I gotta rewatch it. I don't remember. I could be. I could be. I know. Continue. I have, continue. I've lost words in my head, <laughs> but I think that he was in jail. Basically, when he came out of jail, um, he had a deeper understanding of like the reverence mm-hmm. of the Lord. And based off his story, I kind of went through the same experience. I noticed that. Um, I think a few months ago, I think I told you about this too. Um, I was falling into a sin that I didn't want to fall into anymore, basically. And it wasn't nothing that was consistent. It wasn't like a constant thing I'm like doing every day. But like even if it was like a few months later, I'm like, yo, why am I still doing this? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I came to the conclusion that I do fear the Lord, but I feel like I can fear you even more. So I okay. want to learn more about the fear of God. Cause I know I know I love you. I know I love you. Uh, but I feel like I can fear you even more than what I fear you now. So I'm gonna go on this journey to try to deepen my fear of you. So what I'm going to say is this, too, like, because we're letting this be an example. So the statement I made, I was like, I don't think you can love God if you don't fear him. I appreciate, like, notice how even though I said what I said, he could have got offended because that directly goes against his own experiences with God. Mm. Right? So you could have been like, how are you going to tell me? You know, but you were like, huh. Like, when you take that position of curiosity, when you choose to love before you understand, because I didn't know why you said what you said. You don't know why I said what I said. But so, but we gotta figure that out. Like, I gotta listen to that before I can let my emotions fully form. What is it? Kind words t- turn away a harsh, a harsh tone. I don't know, man. Y'all was gonna make me get my Bible out. <sighs> it's gotta be my Bible. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like it's like a uh, harsh tone and bite to harm, not a harsh tone, something like that. Uh, kind words. If y'all wonder how I find oh, myself, oh, is it love against love and hatred begets? Nah, or like violence begets violence or something like that. Kind words turn away wrath, this says. Let me see. That's also in Proverbs, yeah. Okay, yeah. A soft word turns away wrath, but harsh words stir up anger. Is that what you were saying? Yeah. It's, no, oh, it's, not, it's, not, it's not the same scripture. But, no, oh, it's well, not the same scripture. But um, that is the message. Is, the concept. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 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 it's similar. Yeah. Um, But it's like, because when I was, and so after hearing what you had to say, I do agree. Yeah. And I would say that there are different levels of relationship with God. So when you, oh God, I love you so much. You can only love God as much as you know him. Mm-hmm. Right? So I'll say that. That's what I mean by there are levels to, yeah. to, to, to loving God. If I know God saved me, he's, if I, oh, Jesus is my savior. Oh, I love you for that. But if I don't know he's my Lord, I don't know how to fear him for that. We t- Talked about. And I yeah. don't know how to love him for what he provides in fear. Mm. You feel me? Yeah, I do. So it's like, oh, now you got me in Proverbs. Because that goes into different the different functions of God. Exactly. Yeah. He's more than just your savior. Right. So it's like, you might love this part of God, but you don't know this part of God. Right. So, oh. it's, but, but if you know it and you choose, like, that's what I said, like, when you fear God, you can fear God, but you'll know you've increased in love when the fear of God <coughs> sits on your heart different. The conviction now becomes strong enough to move you away from your wicked ways. Yes. That's literally about to, not about to say that, but I was about to say that's like saying you love Jesus, but you don't love the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit Ooh. is the one who convicts you. Come on now. You know what I mean? But it, that's the thing, though. We try to pick and choose. Yeah. Because you can, if you can't, you can't love Jesus. Oh, man. So if you don't know... Oh my gosh. You see what I'm about to do? No, I got it. I'm going to make it quick. If you know Jesus and you love Jesus, but don't know the Holy Spirit, that might be why you have a hard time experiencing comfort and peace. Oh my gosh. Okay, so relate that back to people. You, we know God. We know all of God. Mm -hmm. So we love all of Him. So I cannot know, I cannot love you fully unless I know all of you. Not necessarily knowing like, like all of your past, but and all of your future, whatever. 
knowing your heart. You gotta know my heart. I gotta know your heart. I gotta yeah. know why you. I gotta know a little bit of why you think the you way need you context, think. Context. I need context, but still the heart. I need. Yeah, exactly. I need context to your heart. Context to your to your character. Yeah. You know, and that's how. That's the beginning of love. Mm-hmm. You can't and and so, when that's the yeah yeah, and like if you don't know their heart, get to know the get to know the context of their heart right before, like, dude, how you gonna hate me? Mm-hmm. When you ain't even got the capacity to love me. Mm-hmm. What the heck, bro? Mm-hmm. That's so backwards. Bro, on social media. So um, I'll use my video, even though I wasn't really speaking the video. But I'm going to use my video as an example. Um, when people talk about Jesus or talk about um, the gospel at all, people, if they really truly believe what they're saying is right, they generally say it with a loving tone. Right. So in the comments, before I say anything, I know what you're saying wasn't malicious because of your tone. Mm-hmm. I know your intention. The words the, you use. The intention behind your heart and all of that, you know? And the so, spirit will be on it. Exactly. And so going off of what we said about, um, like, I uh, knowing you is basically the beginning of, of love and everything, you don't have to necessarily have to know that person on the screen or whatever to know that they weren't being malicious. You can listen uh, to the tone of their, yeah. their voice because that's going to be the tone of their heart yeah. as well, you know? And that's where I can be like, okay, let me not try to rebuke this man because he's not a demon. Right. Let me just go ahead and be like, you know what? And not, I wouldn't even say do this in the comments. Let me DM him, you know? Let right. Me, make this private. Like like the words, yes. the, the verse you just gave, make this private and be like, yo, like, I love your love for God. I love what you're doing for him. I have some comments. Um, Send them the nicest way possible. Don't say like, you know what? You're wrong. This, this, and that. No. Say, I love what you were doing. I love that you love God. Yeah. I have some comments. Like, Can we talk about this? And if he doesn't respond, leave it. And dog, that's the thing too. People, again, another reason why people are so passionate about correcting other believers or correcting people on like why they're misspeaking on the gospel is because you don't understand your works are not going to get you to heaven. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You Little think you got to, you, you think you being a defender of faith is going to get you to heaven. No, it's not. Do you know me? Mm-hmm. Do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> but it's like my dad was talking about this earlier, bro. You know what a scatter plot is? The math drink? Yeah. Yeah. You know what it looks like? The dots? Yeah. I think. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bet, bet. Watch this. Yeah. So when you say, like, we know that God, when you get before the Father, He will say, He'll, if you do not know me, get away from my face. Mm-hmm. If you love me and keep my commandments, and if you know my face, those are the, those are the things. You know what I'm saying? Now, imagine doing doing. Now, of course, if you love God, keep His commandments, and uh, know His face, He will have you do great works. Right, right. That comes with it. It's comes with it. But doing great works will not get you to heaven. No. Doing great works and even knowing the word, it's like a scatter plot. I know Proverbs 26. Mm-hmm. I know Psalms 41. Mm. I know Revelations 53. I know Genesis 1. I can. I can. I committed to memory all of Isaiah, mm-hmm. and all the the, the the points are scattered. It's a scatter plot. Mm-hmm. So you know all of these things, but what you really need is a linear equation. Mm-hmm. A linear equation. I know Genesis one through six. I pray to God about it. I invite Holy Spirit into my life. I invite God to redirect my heart. All these things, it goes. Ah! <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. Scatter plot. You just know a lot and do a lot of things, but you don't know me. You know what that is, bro? So you can't get to me. The line is the substance of what you know. You know what I mean? If you just know a lot of verses, there's no substance to right. anything you're saying. You just know stuff. That's what what's the word say about that? The word says that um, uh, if you're talking and no one's listening, you're just a, no- a noisy symbol. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what that is. Because yes. when you just have all that knowledge, you're just saying <laughs> things. You just da, 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 da. but when you have substance to what you know, I can listen to you now because now you're saying it out of love, out of Facts. a loving tone. And like me and my dad were talking about this when you're ministering to people or when you're trying to spread the gospel or spread like talk about God and Jesus, you don't say everything you know. Yeah, you say what you think they need to hear. That that, that goes into what I was about to say too. That that was my next point. Um. When you, when you fear God, fearing God is no one to shut up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I can love God and feel like I have to say more things for, out of love for him. Mm-hmm. But fearing God is being like, you know what? I feel the conviction. I'm not going to ignore it. 
I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna shut up. Yeah. Because I could say, if you didn't know Jesus, which would be weird because you're on this podcast. I'm just kidding. I would be. <laughs> I, leaving the people. Stranger, stranger <laughs> things have happened. They have happened. <laughs> they have. But if you didn't know Jesus and I'm sitting here talking to you, trying to get you to know Jesus, mm-hmm. and I'm just I'm just saying things, you know. I'm like, uh, I don't know. Jesus loves you, and you can go to heaven if you know Jesus, you know. <laughs> and Holy Spirit is like, that's it. You're done. Um, he that's all he needs. Like, he, I yeah. got it from here. I'm like, nah, Holy Spirit said that. I got nah, this. I I'm got this. Sure. You don't know what I was about to say though. <laughs> you're going to hell. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're, you're going to hell if you don't. You, I, I'm trying to save you from hell. You need oh. you need to repent right now. Or and they be else. saying it with a smile. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be, I, I love you, brother. You're going to hell. You're going to burn. You, do you want to burn? <laughs> this even feels weird. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to burn? Yeah, we. Holy Spirit's back here. Like I'm, I'm convicting you, but you're not listening to me. Like mm. I need you to be quiet. You're going to ruin it. And by the time we're done our conversation, you thought you loved Jesus at first, but now you're confused. Now you're like, you know what? Maybe I don't love Jesus. Maybe maybe I don't need to know that guy. Because the guy you were talking about at first right. was sounded pretty cool. Mm-hmm. But you added all, the, all this other stuff that I don't even understand. <laughs> and now I'm scared. So now I'm going to, you know what? Have a good day. I'm, I'm just, I'm just going I'm, I'm to go. You know? You know? Never meet Jesus. Because you were supposed to be the seed that planted. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I've been done. <laughs> I was, look, bro, as you were talking, God was like, yeah, you're done. I was like, uh-huh. I, know. <laughs> I, I, I hear you. I'm just, when he's done, I'm going to be done. Oh, you're be, done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I really mean it. I'm really done. That's hilarious. Yo. Man, don't uproot your seed, man. If you plant a seed, don't uproot it. Listen to God. I guess we done. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> <laughs>